She just wants to be beautiful. She goes unnoticed. She knows no limits. She craves attention. She praises the pear shaped seamstress. And then, and what I do, I make clothes for um, plus size pear shaped and uniquely shaped women. I'm going to get into my topic. So, I don't ascribe to a, a dress to impress because then the next, it seems like an incomplete sentence. Dress to impress who? And for what? Instead of dressing to impress, dress to attract. If you are trying to go to a higher level or if you are trying to go to a different space, you need to attract people that are in that same sphere. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, attract people that sit in that same fit in that same sphere. One of the ways that you can do that is by speaking in their dress language. You know, my last live, I talked about how your outfit and your clothing is a communication tool, whether you want it to be or not. You know, you are sending messages out there. You are speaking. It's an extension of your voice. You are speaking to the outside world, whether or not you want to. <clears throat> right. And then. On a basic level, there's five messages that you can be sending out to people about yourself, whether you know it or not. Um, you know, people can assess your political views. They can assess your religious views. They can ass assess your your gender identity, um, your possible age and your social and economical background based on how you dress now it may not be a correct assessment but they will make a judgment they will make a judgment and decide whether or not they want to relate to you based on how we dress whether we like it or not i know as a kid i had a hard time with that because i grew up in you know, and in a pop, now I want to say I grew up in a low income household, you know, I grew up in a low income household and my mom, she just could not afford to buy me name brand stuff. You know, she just couldn't afford to buy me name brand stuff. And as a result, dressing was so important. I was not able or allowed to be a part of that in crowd because of the way I dress you know and I was a quiet little girl so I couldn't make them laugh and whatever I could just be nice to people that's all the hell I knew how to do child just be nice okay well don't people don't want you to be nice <laughs> I'm just playing but I learned then that People make judgments and they decide whether or not they will relate to you based off of that preliminary information, you know, and it's not personal, you know, it's a lot going on. We have a society of a lot of humans, a lot of humans going around here, you know, so we trying to get things done. So different groups and different people work together to try to get things done. So they got to make an assessment of whether or not they can work with you because they ain't got a whole lot of time to waste, honey. So some people, especially our society is segmented, you know, and it's segmented by different things. But one big factor that's segmented and is social economic, right? How much money people make, you know, and different. Some people in some segments. They ain't going to fool with you. You know, they're going to make the judgment based off of, I ain't got time to be no teacher, honey. I ain't got time to deal with somebody who mind ain't on the same place that I'm at. And they're going to uh, 
they're going to look at it. They're going to think of it based on how you look, you know, based on how you look. If you feel like you a flower child, like I feel like I'm a flower child and they super serious. They're going to be like, oh, she playing games. I ain't got time. I'm trying to do this, you know. So you will then probably group back to your, your flower children over there. You see what I'm saying? All right, that's all I got, y'all. Peace.